So leaf blower, go! So there's a lot of different helmet options and it's not always super clear what the difference is. And sometimes I feels like that's on purpose, right? Oh, well if I spend more money, my head will be more safe. Well, not necessarily. Let's talk about it. So there's a lot of different types of helmets and there's a lot of information out there, but it's not always super clear what the difference is. So I'm just gonna kind of run through and I can tell you the difference. And I had to make a lot of phone calls. I had to call Pac, I had to call several friends in the industry because it is not super straightforward. And honestly, I've been dying to know what the difference is between race helmets and multi-impact helmets and just MIPS helmets. So let's get into it. So we'll start with your most basic uh, helmet. Although this is a MIPS helmet, which uh, does not stand for multi-impact. You'd think they'd think of a better acronym, but alas, that's where we're at. This is a single impact MIPS helmet. What MIPS stands for, uh, I will tell you at some other time, but basically it, it means that if you get in a crash and your brain spins, and it'll allow the, the pins to basically break away on the inside of the helmet and it'll help prevent brain rotation, which causes concussions and other brain damage. Here you have a multi-impact helmet. Now it's a multi-impact spins or MIPS. Spins and MIPS are basically synonymous. It's kind of like waterproof and Gore-Tex. So if you hear those two things, they are synonymous with one another. Uh, Pac has recently moved to the MIPS, so you can think about it like North Face moving from just being waterproof to Gore-Tex. MIPS is just kind of a name brand for preventing head trauma and, and brain spin. So here we have the Orc, the Pac Orc cut. And basically this is a multi-impact helmet that is going to also prevent brain spin if it comes on an impact. The difference between these two helmets is that this one can take multiple impacts, as the name kind of implies. So essentially say that there's a twig or you're inside clearing a branch, this helmet, if it takes that, well, you don't have to throw it away. If you drop it on the ground accidentally, it's probably okay. Um, but really what it's allowing, it's got this kind of foam here. You can see the blue part of the helmet here. Basically when it takes small impacts, it will breathe back and kind of get its life back in it. So that's what the multi-impact comes in. These are typically more expensive, but in my experience, they're worth it, especially if you're someone who likes to ski in the trees and you've got branches kind of hitting your helmet, you don't have to worry about it being compromised and being a risk for big impacts. So that is how the multi-impact helmet works. Um, I would recommend this to almost everyone. I know that they're more expensive, but honestly, knowing that your helmet isn't gonna be compromised by a branch or maybe it being rough inside of your bag if you got kids, I would say go with the multi-impact, especially for adults, because there's so many times where I've just kind of inside cleared or had a branch kind of come out of nowhere from someone ahead of me. So it was nice that I didn't have to throw away my helmet over something silly like that. Now, lastly, we have the race helmet. So the race helmet, functionally, is the same as this multi-impact helmet. This is also multi-impact and MIPS and spin. FIS regulations do not allow ski racers to use softier helmets for anything besides slalom, right? GS, Super G, downhill. You are not allowed to have a softier helmet. And I actually called Pac directly to ask them. I talked to someone in customer support, so granted they weren't in engineering, right? But they answered, well, because sometimes the GS skates will hit the ear pieces and they don't want them to be uh, compromised or they don't want anything to kind of get in there or damage your ears, which fair enough, but I don't think that that's the real reason. So if this helmet and this helmet both have a MIPS rating and they're both multi-impact, what is the difference and why is it that the FIS regulation does not allow you to use a soft earpiece in GS, Super G, anything really other than slalom? So the reason that I got from the POC reps is basically that they're worried about the gates coming into contact with these soft ear pieces and kind of getting hooked or caught in or exposing your ears or any other part of your, your face to get hit by the gates. Now, in my experience, that doesn't track super well because really your biggest risk of getting kind of a gate in like that has been slalom. And GS gates, I don't know, you're typically not coming straight at them. And the, the faster you go, the less kind of impact you're gonna typically see with the gate. My theory actually is this. So when you're going really fast, with a soft ear helmet. Well, when you're going really fast, there is more opportunity and there's more airflow coming at the helmet. And what I've experienced firsthand when I'm doing tuck rounds on a Super G Hill is that if enough air gets kind of underneath these earpieces, 
I'll start to feel it lift, right? And I have my chin strap tight, so I don't really feel anything dangerous. But what will happen is essentially the air will get underneath the helmet and you'll start to feel it lift off of your head, which I'm sure is not optimal for an impact. So this solid earpiece basically creates kind of an airtight fit and anyone who's had a race helmet knows that they're kind of quiet, right? Because you don't get as much sound in there and they're a little bit warmer as well. Allow me to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about here. So let's say I've got my helmet on and the wind comes in. See how I've got a little play here? The wind will swoop up and suddenly you start to feel it and it's up here and it's out of place and it's a safety issue. Now I wear mine pretty tight, I usually ratchet it down, but that wind catching in is there. So that's my theory as to the difference between a race helmet and just a backcountry MIPS multi-impact helmet. For one, racers wouldn't want that, right? You don't want wind to get inside of these earpieces and kind of lift up the helmet and create this giant air break. So typically you want the air pieces to be kind of airtight because it's gonna allow you to have less drag. But from a safety perspective too, it's not kind of lifting the helmet up and allowing it to get out of place, especially if you do get into a crash. So that all being said, you know, if you're looking out and you wanna go out and buy a helmet, okay, you have three options. If you only ski a couple times a year and you really aren't using your helmet much, a single impact helmet is fine, especially for kids, right? Because for kids, if they have more than one impact, they're probably, you need to throw it away, but they outgrow helmets so quickly that that's not super important. And just be diligent. If you see them get a large impact, throw the helmet out and get a new one, right? But as from a safety perspective, multi-impact isn't providing any real safety uh, features or pluses. A race helmet is gonna be prime for racing because if you're coming into contact with gates or if you're kind of doing an inside clear with a GS gate, it's not gonna destroy the safety of a helmet. So if you have a kid that's going into racing, this is a great option. But if you're just um, an everyday adult and you're looking for something safe, this isn't really providing any extra safety features. Say if you're from the East Coast and it's really cold, sure, get a race helmet. I mean, it's probably warmer anyway. These solid ear pieces are a lot warmer. They're harder to hear out of, but there are some benefits. But really, there's no extra safety. And I was kind of curious about that because I've always had race helmets and I thought, oh, am I getting less safety out of you know, just a kind of a backcountry helmet. And that's not true at all. Um, it's just, especially if you're getting a multi-impact helmet, which is a little bit more expensive, you're getting just as much safety out of your helmet. But if you go barreling down the hill and you're gonna tuck, well, the wind is gonna get under it. Now to demonstrate what I'm talking about, I'm out here in my backyard with a helmet on and I'm gonna use the leaf blower to illustrate what I'm talking about. So leaf blower, go! So what's happening, oh my God. <laughs> sorry. So what's happening here is that when you're going that fast, if you're in a low tuck, the wind is starting to get under this ear flap and it's starting to displace where your helmet is. For most people skiing, that's not a problem, but for anyone racing who's getting into a low tuck, that is a problem. When you're going that fast, you don't want your helmet out of place. And you also, th thinking about it from an aerodynamics perspective, you don't want this giant air brake slowing you down and pulling your head out of position. So that is really the big difference between, I, in my mind, the hard ear piece helmets versus the soft ear helmets. So a quick summary is if you are just an average skier and you're not going that fast, or even really, unless you're in a low tuck and you're racing, you really don't need a race helmet. Uh, a multi-impact helmet should be plenty. But the reason that you have those hard ear pieces, which I was wondering, is it an extra safety feature? But no, it, in my mind, it's more of an aerodynamics and kind of built-in safety feature that's gonna keep that air from getting your helmet out of position or even kind of creating drag on you. So quick answer, if you're not racing, you probably don't need these hard ear pieces. Uh, they, they are a lot warmer and they're a lot harder to hear. So for the average skier, multi-impact soft ear helmet, probably the safest and best option for you. But absolutely, if you're racing, don't try to like fudge it with the soft ears. That was really unpleasant having the wind kind of pulled up on my head like that. So now you know the true difference between a multi-impact helmet with soft ears versus a multi-impact with hard ears versus a single impact helmet. Single impact helmets, as long as they are MIPS and they're gonna prevent brain rotation, are perfectly fine for kids and toddlers. Great option for them. 
A multi-impact helmet I think is the best option for an adult or someone who is an advanced skier. And if you are a racer, well there's a reason they have specific hard ear multi-impact race helmets. Wow, my mouth is extremely dry from using the leaf blower for so long. So that's kind of the difference between the three types of helmets and you know, just giving people an understanding of what helmets do, when you should throw them out, and what they're made for because there's not a lot of transparency around it. Honestly, I had to call Pac, wait for a week, talk to one of their reps to even get an understanding of the difference between this helmet and a race helmet. Thanks so much for watching. If I can uh, ask you to like and subscribe, that'd be great. I know that's kind of played out, but hey, it helps. And uh, thanks for watching my content more than anything. I really appreciate it.